Hey, welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. This is our Sermon Rewind series where we are talking about our previous week's message. Uh, that's right. This is a supplemental tool or resource for you. Our prayer is that you are coming to church, getting the messages, getting into the Word of God, and then this would be a resource that you can share, be encouraged by as we get to delve and dive more deeply into the previous week's message. Yeah. My name is Antonio here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. And I am here with my friend, Pastor Paul Ogando, obviously a familiar face. Uh, the numbers tell us that you really like Pastor Paul, <laughs> and he'll be here with us for the next couple weeks again. And so we're looking forward to being with you, all, our Rock Church family. Again, I want to encourage you, like, comment, share. Uh, we love the feedback that we're getting. Uh, our prayer is that, you know, again, we want to be consistent. We want to continue to do this. We feel like it's a great resource and tool, like I mentioned. Uh, and so we want to continue to do this. Pastor Paul, what is up? Hey, what's going on, man? I, I'm excited. This is getting better and better each week. So let's let's dive in, man. Yeah, we've been having fun and we closed out our Your World series and we started a new series. You know, funny thing about the uh, new ser series, if you didn't know, we started the book of Romans. Now, um, on the back end, we had talked about uh, at the birthday, hey, we're going to let's come up with a trailer to release the new book right the new like what the new book is because over the years it's always fun kind of building up some anticipation right. into what the next book is because we go line upon line and we'll talk about that here in a moment what that means uh and so hey let's do his trailer romans we can do some fun things with that and so uh, I, I was hosting and i was like all right guys hey who's excited to know what the new book is gonna be right and then i'm like who's like you know any guesses and then uh, I was like, all right, play the video. And then just right off the bat, just Romans. <laughs> and then it's kind of, you know, it was just, it was kind of anticlimactic because, right. and, and we didn't design the trailer to be like this, what is it going to be? Right. So that's why right off the bat, just said Romans. <laughs> but to me, I'm up there like, you know, just kind of, all right, well, that didn't go how I, I planned it. Surprise. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, this is an exciting book. Um, the book of Romans makes me think of another thing, Roman, uh, a trend that was on social media called Roman Empire. Are you familiar with the Roman Empire? Like, what's your Roman Empire or how often? So it started in 2023 on social media. The trend was there's these ladies going to their partners, their boyfriends, their husbands and saying, hey, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? Oh, right. I've heard that. Yes. Right. So how often do you think about the Roman Empire? And it was like, oh, once a day. Like, And it was like it was catching. It was right. funny because it was like. Is this really a thing? Correct. Um, so then it's morphed the trend like always. It's, it's morphed into like, what is your Roman Empire? What is the equivalent of something that you're thinking about often that if someone asks you like what, you know, I'm thinking about this three times a day. I'm the, you know, so right. what is your Roman Empire, Pastor? Man, that's a that's a big question. I think Dominican if, baseball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're thinking about wake up in the middle of the night like, uh -huh. No, I think about baseball around September. Okay, yeah, August. for real. That's and as a baseball fan, so you're yeah. a baseball, and I am not a big baseball fan. But that's when I that's when it gets exciting. Correct. Yeah. Uh, no, you season. know what? If I if I'm honest, what my, my Roman Empire? I think it has to do with life purpose. Like, am I uh, doing yeah. so? For example, ministry. Am yeah. I doing this? Um, is this kind of a am I in the groove that God wants like that that stuff keeps so you'll be catching uh, is someone like hey you're thinking about that Correct. recurringly yeah yeah okay. so that that keeps me engaged um I think other two things obviously would be family or my kids doing well those things yeah. you think about but uh you know so those are things that drive but if I'm honest just recently it's just kind of funny so I've been watching this medical uh series on yeah. on tv and um I was telling my wife I was like man I could have been a good surgeon. Look at this. <laughs> and then she looked at me like, what are, what are you doing? Like, what is going on? You know, you think about these things like, like checking your done? hand. Yeah. <laughs> Does it, no shake. Look at that. I could have been a surgeon. I'm really like, oh, about 50 years old. Yeah, let's skip that. Uh, so, yeah, no, I would say those to me, that's a, a thing that what is building my life, you know? That's good. Yeah. All right. That's see, see that's a relief. I won't tell you my Roman Empire. Then, and then. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's it, too. My, ditto, Pastor Paul. <laughs> that's my Roman Empire. I'm constantly thinking about that. It's not food right. or the Lakers or the trades or anything like that. Um, but anyways, so the book of Romans. Um, and, and it's funny you said that about purpose and identity of some of those things. because I think that's kind of what we're touching in the book right. of Romans. Um, 
But let's go into what it means because someone might be watching their new or like, okay, getting into a new book. What does that even mean? And I I know sometimes uh, over the years, if you've been part of The Rock for a long time, you'll know that, you know, we we go through a book from the beginning, from chapter one, verse one, all the way to the last verse. Uh, But what does that mean? And then we hear hear this term, line upon line, precept upon, upon precept is the way that we learn and teach the Word of God here. Can you go into that, explain that for us, what, what it means? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're not the only church that does this. Um, there's there's many churches that like that style. It's not very common. Um, it's called spo- expository preaching. So basically the idea is that you take the book, you take the verse by verse, you break it down as it is written. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the um, one of the rules of biblical interpretation is that the Bible interprets the Bible. That's good. And so, uh, so you don't need to find a lot of external things to add to it. Just the Bible itself gives you the clues and the directions of where you're heading. And the concept of line upon line, precept upon piece, actually comes from the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, God is telling the children of Israel, like, hey, this is how things are laid out. And so when you guys go into service, this is how you look at it. And so I, and so this idea that God was some, their precepts are built upon each other. Right. And so that's found in the book of Isaiah. I don't know exactly where, but I know it's in Isaiah. Um, and so when we do it at our church, and since our founding pastor teaches that way, and we've all learned that way, the idea is that this whatever book we grab, there's so much in each phrase and yeah. verses. And so we're not in a rush. You know, mm-hmm. it will take us years, I believe. Um, you know, I, I started a Spanish service when Pastor Jim was ending, uh, I think, Ephesians, if I remember correctly. And then we went to Galatians, yeah, and I that took that. a few years. And then we did Hebrews. That was six years of yeah. our life was yeah. Hebrews. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going into Romans. Uh, I'm in Spanish service. I'm teaching the book of John. And so when I end that, I'll go into Romans. But that's the idea. We mm-hmm. want to break down uh, because there's so much content. And instead of just being topic-driven, which is not wrong, Pastor, I just finished the Your yeah. Life series, which is all topics. Uh, all biblically based so we go back into that style of teaching right and and the reason why i think that's really cool is because it has worked out and i don't i wouldn't say it was a coincidence i would say by the spirit of god that oftentimes we just happen to be on a verse that is very pertinent and prevalent to what's going on in society at the time right so again we'll be in romans 1 1 and then we'll you know go through different verses uh, but what we've seen and other as we were doing, remember the story, um, the body life series where we're going through the life of Jesus. Right. It just happened to be Easter time when we're finishing the life of Jesus. And right. it's this Easter and it's like there's study and there's preparation. But then there's also the spirit of God, how he breathes on some of these things. Yeah. And we can see how and again, like you said, there's nothing wrong with just doing topics, uh, topical type messages or, right. or sermons. Um, but when you are going line upon line, you're learning it. Pastor Jim used to say it this way. That's how it was written. And that's how we should learn it. Correct. Um, and and you don't get to skip and say, you know, you don't get to skip verses because right. you don't like them. You have to go into it. And I think that's really good for us as Christians to learn the Bible as it was written, because a lot of p- challenges believers have with reading the Bible is it can be confusing. Mm-hmm. It can Again, we use this word a lot, context. If we don't understand the context or what was going on while it's being written, then it all just seems very foreign to us. And what what line upon line tends to do is it forces us to go into it. We can take a look at this chapter in its context and preach a message and see what God is speaking to us, even now, 2,000 years later. Uh, And and that's pretty powerful. So I'm very excited to be in this book of Romans, and we'll be going verse by verse or again, um, each message might include more than one verse, but we're going to see, uh, we'll be able to study what this is. And actually, you're on this weekend. Right. Can we get a clue as to what verse or verses you'll be touching yeah. on? So, you know, touching a little what you said is important for people to know, and I'm sure most people know, but I'll, I'll rephrase it or remind, the Bible was not written in chapters and verses. Right, yes. Therefore, they were, they were letters. These were letters that these apostles wrote to a certain area church. And so if you look at a letter, you don't break it down in chapter and verse. So there's a cohesive thought yeah. that this particular person is writing and yeah. putting down and saying, hey, I want you to think of these things I'm writing. And so, um, you know, in expository preaching, there could be the danger that we break things a little too, yes. too yeah. small. Yeah. Um, and so it becomes separated from what we're trying to achieve right. or from what the writer is really trying to achieve. And you can't achieve. create a doctrine out of one verse that Thank was you. taken out of. Yeah. yeah. 
And that, and that's the danger of it. The good thing of it is just like I explained is that there's an understanding how it was written, how it was laid out. There's an understanding to it. And you shouldn't be afraid of it. You shouldn't right. be afraid of finding certain verses that are, man, that, that's pushing my boundaries, that's pushing my thinking. Then look at it. Think right. it through. Because once again, Bible interprets Bible. There are, there are clues within yeah. the Bible itself right. that are leading to one thought. And so this week, um, jumping off of uh, point one, which we're going to break down in a minute, uh, verse one, I'm going to go all the way down to verse five. Oh, cool. And the idea is kind of staying the same what Pastor Dan said, but with a different thought. And the cool. thought is this, that by, through Jesus... God gave us the grace, meaning the empowerment. Yeah. He gave us a calling, mm -hmm. a purpose for us yeah. to live by, and all of it, all of that was for his glory. Yeah. And that's the idea that Paul is writing. Paul says, by through him, through Jesus, I was given grace mm -hmm. and I was called and I was given the apostleship to preach the good news to the Gentiles for the glory of him. That's okay. And so the uh, you know, the thought is that all of us in life, we have something God has given us, and so we have to, if he gives you something, he's also going to empower you to do it, yeah. but the end goal is so God gets the glory. Yeah. The end goal is not so we get a bigger platform. The end goal is not so we feel good about ourselves that we preach or did that, but the end goal is let me do what God has called me to do with the empowerment so I can, so I, he can get the glory in the process. That's, that's very cool, Pastor Paul. I, I'm excited and looking forward to that, and you'll be on next week with a surprise guest on the podcast. We just arranged for that to happen. But you'll be back. Is that, is that all right with you guys? Yeah, uh, with you guys, it. and that's cool with you. Uh, Pastor Paul will be back. Well, I wanted to get into, like you mentioned, uh, Pastor Dan's message. There was so much meat on those bones. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, he talked about well, just his points, uh, who I am, what I am, and why I am. Mm. Uh, there was so much, there's so much identity being laid out, and, right. and you're talking about that. So here's Paul right on verse 1 saying who he is and and. Right what Pastor Dan did was take that verse and say, look at what all he's saying. Right. Right. You could read that verse as, oh yeah, that's like, but what all does that mean? Where's the meat on that? And what, that's Correct. what you're talking about. The advantage of the expository. Cause we could just breeze right through that and go right. on our way. And, and that's cool. But what does that really mean? What does that look like? And what, what are our takeaways to recognize the value of what it was because of who Paul actually was. Correct. Right. So for Paul to, write and introduce himself in such a way, given his personal credentials and who he was, it means a lot. Right. Right. So in other words, it's it's um, well, let's think about it this way. I, I know that there's a lot of identity going to be talked about here, especially early on in the chapter. Right. Uh, but what the way I, I saw it and what I wanted to bring it to you was like this. So who I am speaks to our identity. What I am speaks to our position or maybe even our role in, in kingdom or in life. And then the last point that he made was why I am, because uh, God calls, gives us, God gives us our why I am, Correct. or in other words, our purpose. Right. So given those things, our why, given our what, and given our how, how can we walk into the next week, into the next day when we leave a church service or when we hear a message or a sermon? I know I listen to messages while I'm doing er er errands around the house or mm. something. How can I listen to this message or again, having sat in service and walk out and, and what does this mean to me right off the bat? That's a great question. And if I could frame it this way, the apostle Paul, it, one of the identifying markers of all his letters is his identification as a servant of Christ. So from the get go, he found an identity. So for those who probably don't know, in his background, he is probably one of the greatest students of the best theological school at the moment. And so this guy is zealous about what he believes, has an encounter with Jesus, and then all of a sudden his identity is no longer in the fact that he went to the best school for a religion, that he was uh, trusted by the courts to persecute Christian. He all of a sudden says, I am a bond servant of Christ. And right. so you see that type of greeting, uh, grace and love, from Paul, bond servant of Christ. You see it in, in his introduction in different right. letters. Paul is saying, I've taken on an identity in Christ that defines everything I do from that perspective. Right. And I think for us that's important. How do how do we see ourselves? Do we see just a casual Christ believer and I attend the church yeah. or do am I really uh, a, you know, a servant of God that happens to be a stay-at-home mom? Yeah. Am I a servant of God that happens to be a lawyer? Am I a servant of God that happens to be a mechanic? Yeah. Am I a servant of God that happens to be a secretary? Like that in identity, that's very, very important. What is the 
the first identity marker. Right. Um, and so for Paul was, I am a bond servant of Christ. And then I do all these things. And that's why it's important that our our identity in our faith is first. Right. Right. And that's why I've heard it. Uh, it's gained more traction that there, that there, there can't be a hyphen in front of our, mm. you know, I can't be a Latino Christian. That's good. Uh, you can't be a black Christian. You can't be a white Christian. A, a you know, your your culture, yeah. your preference. I mean, I'm a gay Christian. I'm right. a this Christian. Uh, these things can't be in front of us because, in fact, it takes away from that bond servant aspect of who we are our identity as following christ yeah. is always first and always up of the utmost importance correct and again i think we're seeing this coming from the person who is most qualified to give other qualifications yeah. first i mean uh he, he, let's put that in modern day terms correct me if i'm wrong uh you know you're saying he went so imagine a lawyer or someone who went to the harvard law and is studying under the most astute um, constitutional law professors right. and judges and people who have the best grasp. He's studying under these people and he is in a position to argue the law, make the law, take these things to the Supreme Court. And yet, with all those qualifications, with all, he has now stripped himself of those identities right. and said, I'm a bondservant to Christ. Correct. To whom the religious. And the academic people of the time weren't even recognizing Jesus. Right. Right. So put that into context, into perspective. And, and, and we get a little bit of, of years under our belt as believers. Right. Or we carry the pastor's Bible. Right. And, you know, we want to flex on people. Right. And our position is to be, is to recognize our identity as first a servant. No doubt. No, if we, like you said it best, if we hyphen or, in, or invert those things, then what we tend to do is Christianity becomes something we do and not something we are. Yes. Uh, and so, and that, and I find that to be very common and mm -hmm. culturally, it yeah. just becomes something we do and not something I am. Right. And so that's what that beginning phrase is so important. My identity, uh, Paul talks about a lot. I identify with Christ in his sufferings that I may identify with him in resurrection and, yeah. and partake of the glory. So Paul is saying, I want to, Everything I do, I want it to go through the filter of Christ before mm -hmm. anything else. Um, and when we do that, then all of a sudden we have a different vision and perspective of life, how we behave, all the things we do. We're not perfect, yeah. but it does it does affect how we see things. For sure. I, I think people grasp this really well. You can uh, confirm this, but I feel like, you know, I, I work with a, a small group with some of our business leaders and they're grasping this that mm. where they are. So, you know, I am in a. I, I do Christianity as a vocational, as pastors. Right. We, if we're not careful, we could very easily just become very just professional Christians. Correct. Uh, whereas our church is filled with people who are, they understand the assignment, so to speak, where they right. know just what you said. They're a janitor, that it, they're a Christian that is called in this season of their life to be a janitor or a landscaper or a teacher. And I get to hear testimonies all the time of people who are, walking out their faith in their job so Correct. to speak right and and uh, some of our business leaders are leading their businesses as followers of christ yeah. and using what's in their hands to give him glory I and i think that's so cool yeah i had a conversation it's a, a while back our kids play basketball together in our town in our you know recreational league and so uh, another dad and myself we took on the team and his son's very athletic uh young man and he you know my son and him grew together, went to high school, together, went to the same college together. And so uh, we were doing the team dinner after we won, and it was a lot of fun. And so he's a Christian also. Yeah. And um, his dad came to the kids' party. So we're talking, and he's also a dentist. So we're having a conversation. Yeah. He's like, oh, I found out you're a dentist. Yeah, I, I don't practice anymore. I'm a pastor. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. So I wanted to ask him a question about dentistry, how yeah. things are going. And he, he did it very kindly. He said, I don't want to talk about dentistry. I want to talk about Jesus. Wow. I mean, and he floored me. He said, what have you done in missions? Yeah. So here I am like, hey, how's your profession? He said, my profession is my profession, but tell me about God. Tell wow. me what you're doing. And it really showed me like there's some people who do what they do, their profession, they love it, but Christ still their main identifying marker, right. if I should say it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that can, that can I think that's our takeaway is our identity. It, like, And that was Pastor, Paul, Pastor Dan's whole message. Right. Was God gives us these things, correct? And He gives us our purpose. He gives us our plan. 
He gives us our identity. It has to be found in him. So when we start to find it in other things, that has to be our marker. Something has to, that will trigger, that's our trigger warning that something is off. Right. Our identity is now being found in how many followers we have, how much money is in the bank, how much influence I have with these people, uh, how many girls I can have, how many guys I can have, what kind of, you know, how buff I am, how much, how, how much I lifted at the gym. Right. What I, I mean, you insert your <laughs> Roman Empire, what that means to you. And if those identities are now taking on a bigger area in our life than who we are in Christ. Right. And learning, because maybe you don't know who you are in Christ. Right. Well, this message talks about it. Get into the word of God. Come back to church. Listen to the previous messages. And as and we're all growing and learning. I'm, I'm learning more every day about who I am in Christ. Yeah. Because I too. keep learning more and more about how beneath I am in my right. flesh. I The more I, the closer I get to God, the more I realize I need him more and more. Instead of, oh, I, I, I'm, I got this. For sure. Right. When I think I got it is when I'm messing it up. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so the the more I follow Jesus, the more I fall in love with him because I realize, how, oh, my gosh, mm. how, who was I without you? Yeah. Who was I before you? And and I don't want to be that person. <laughs> Correct. Like, I need you more and more. My identity needs to come from you. Shape me, mold me, give me that purpose. So like right. when you're a Roman Empire is thinking about kind of checking in on where you are in that track. I think that's probably a healthy gauge for you mm, to right. see, am I walking in this? Right. For sure. I mean, and again, we've seen more of the identity factor in our society now, and mainly because social media puts it all out there, you know, but I didn't grow up in the social media uh, decade. Um, but still, there was, you would identify with who you hung out with, and those were the things that kind of defined where you were at in life. Were you a sports guy? Were you this or that? And a lot of those things were, um, you know, Mark, just like you said, that you have girlfriends and so, yeah. hey, you're yeah. a player, or you're this. These things were part of how these how society was defined. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a home where only my mother, my sister and I went to a Christian church. Everyone mm. was Catholic. Um, and we were a large family, or we, not immediate family, but, you know, extended family. And so that was really hard, too. I wasn't I didn't have a lot of girlfriends. I was accused of all kinds of stuff. Oh, you're gay. You're this, you're that. Right. And because people were trying to find an identity in mm. these things that you were supposed to do as everyone else. And th those things, it's what affects people. When, yeah. when those things are cast on you or set to you, then they drive your behavior. That's uh, so good. So go, go into that a little bit more, because I, I think how how common that is right if we don't come out with identifying ourselves others will that's correct so how right. are what are some things that we can do to become more secure in self-identifying and then not allowing others perspective on because that they're going to do right. that uh for our, our young people watching who you know if their drive isn't finding the mate is that their main thing mm then someone's going to say you must be this Correct. or you must be that. If someone's drive in their professional career isn't just to get as much money as you can because they want to go on missions or they're being generous and giving right. things away, then they're going to be told you're a false, you, you know, the other identities are going to. So how can we become more secure in who we are so that other people don't? That's a great question. I would say if I could look at the what kind of what affected me, if the number one reason to do it is for self gratification, well, then that is identifying you. Yeah, <clears throat> and so that I would say that would that should be the first thing you check. If you're doing goodwill or helping or helping the poor, is because you feel bad and want to kind of mitigate some things, and that that's not a Christ like reaction. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. Right. People do humanitarian aid all the time to feel good about themselves. Right. But when we're Christ driven, we're trying to do it because. In the end, remember, Christ gets the glory. So yes, the idea so is good. I want to do this. So th those things, when those identity are cast upon you, then you have to uh, do that. You have to look at it. I, you know, growing up, I grew very poor, low middle class. And um, and so one of the jokes when we were uh, when we were teenagers, like, oh, man, this guy, I, you always need money to go to movies with us. Or you always yeah. need money. And so for a time in my teenage years, that kind of marked me. Mm -hmm. And so I remember that I was driven, oh, I have to do this and I have to be self-sufficient, I have to make money. And then at one point, I just remember dealing this with God because God, I said, Lord, you say you're the provider. So I didn't 
I didn't design my life. It's just right. I, my mother had no money. We had no money. But that doesn't mean I'm stingy. That doesn't mean I have a poor mentality. So I had to cast that identity wow. of me. Yeah. And so Tracy and I became givers. Tracy and I became helpers. Yeah. She didn't grow rich either. And so, but we didn't take on that identity and say, oh, we're poor. And so we grew up poor. And so our behavior has to do, we said, no, if our identity is in Christ, Christ is a giver, Christ is generous, Christ is a provider, then I'm going to take on those things. And yeah. so we became that. And, um, you know, and again, you know, my friends sometimes make jokes about it. My, my uh, friends from youth, uh, but I no longer feel offended. I no longer feel hurt. Like, Oh, I'm pobrecito. You know, yeah. it means poor. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just poor me. Uh, you know, I no longer do that. I decided that's not my identity. My identity in Christ is he's my father. He's my provider. Yes. I grew up in a very difficult economic situation, but that has not defined my life moving forward. That's good. Uh, and so I think if you take it on and that label defines you, then you feel bad. If you go to a nice restaurant or you, feel bad or you try to compensate and now you're in debt to your eyeballs because you need to drive the car to prove that you've made it buy the clothes to prove wow. that you made it and so all those things the lord has stripped from me well and pastor dan did talk about that all of a sudden you are spending money you don't have to impress people you don't like right <laughs> and 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 really what you're doing is trying to heal that inner whatever yep. it was and that's not how you heal it correct because uh, again you're trying to heal it versus allowing god to give you a new perspective a new right. mentality on it and those are just voids that we cannot fill ourselves and actually we'll put ourselves right. in a world of hurt uh, and debt and in bad places, all trying to fix an identity when we can just get a new one from right. Christ. You know, in your points there, when what Pastor is saying, who I am, what I am, um, you know, one of the things that a lot of times, especially my wife as a homemaker for uh, most of her life. Now, for people that are new to our story, my wife. Uh, went to college, graduated with honors mm -hmm. um, from journalism. She was a, a newspaper editor, so she had a career. Right. Um, but she felt that her greatest investment was her family. Mm -hmm. So I never asked her to stop working. I never asked. She just said, "I when the baby comes, I want to stay home. And I remember having that conversation because I grew different. My mother was a working mom because she mm -hmm. was a single mom. And so my thought is she's going to work. I'm going to work. going to make pulled us through, but our commitment to our family helped us to define that she's not lesser. And the, so the what I am all times, if there are ladies listening, there are moms, they invest, your purpose in Christ is not limited by what you do in the daily life. All right. So what I mean by that is she was still a, a great, you know, helper here at church. She was a volunteer on the worship team before we were pastors. She did all those things while being a stay-at-home mom. And so my point to that is, she you don't let those things define you yeah. god gives you a purpose yeah. and yeah. those purpose might have a season right um and so what is the season that you're in with the purpose that god gave you understanding that who you are as far as a child of god who you are is a bond servant of christ yeah. yep so paul says i'm a bond servant of christ sent to be an apostle so, so yeah so you are a daughter of christ sent to be a homemaker for the stage of your life or hey yeah. my kids are grown now i'm going to be a volunteer so and so i'm going to take them a job elsewhere whatever yeah you yeah know? that's so cool pastor paul I, i've enjoyed uh this conversation i'm looking forward to getting to this some more and you're preaching this weekend and we'll be back again uh next week any last thoughts i mean i, I know we kind of i, I feel like we we <laughs> Right. I thought we did it, guys. I don't know. Leave a comment if you have right. more questions. We love answering those interacting with you all. Yeah. But in, otherwise, until next time, we'll see you. We love you guys. Thank you, Pastor Pope.